One of my favorite, favorite things about old Macs is they had this whole underground industry of accelerators. Many Macs from the 90s and 2000s had processors on daughter cards or on ZIF sockets, allowing companies like Sonnet, Neurotech, and PowerLogix to make processor upgrades that you could just swap right in and totally transform your Mac with stuff like cool purple heat sinks and fancy names like Allegro and V-Power. And I'm obsessed with these things. But there were a few really neat Macs built with no obvious upgrade path. Processors soldered right onto the motherboard. In fact, Sonnet referred to them as the Upgrade Challenged Macs. Well, those clever engineers found a way to upgrade those things anyway, completely bypassing the original processors in a totally weird way. And today, we're going hands-on with that impossible upgrade. So stay tuned. And if you enjoy powerful purple processors in old school Macintoshes, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. I've got plenty more shenanigans where this came from, so it's definitely worth sticking around. This old accelerator culture is just so interesting. I think because compared to today's tech, it's just so weird. Today, you're lucky if you can upgrade the RAM in your laptop. Unless you're DOS Dude 1 with nerves of steel, solder balling gear, and uh, a sacrificial MacBook Air. But back in the 90s, people were swapping out their laptop's entire CPU for third-party upgrades, or even changing the entire architecture of their whole machine with a simple swap-in card. This beautiful PowerBook 540C started life with a 68K processor, but I've swapped in a PowerPC upgrade, which is a totally different architecture. That would be like popping out the Intel i7 in your MacBook Pro and just sticking an M1 in there. Technology was just moving so fast back then. It made sense to upgrade machines to keep them viable. And a lot of computers were just built with those easy upgrades in mind. Here, let me show you a few. This unassuming beige tower is probably my favorite Mac that I own. It's a power computing PowerWave 604 that originally came with a 150 megahertz PowerPC CPU, but the CPU is on a daughter card. So you can get upgrades as fast as a one gigahertz G4 that simply slot right in. Look at that, we just advanced a decade in technology in like half a second, amazing. The UMAC Super Mac S900 even had two of those processor upgrade slots in there. I've got a G4 here in one of them, but this could even take a special dual processor configuration unique to the Super Mac. And in fact, Apple later licensed some of UMAX's technology for their own multiprocessor machines. This lovely little Power Macintosh G3 desktop was originally 233 megahertz, but this was one of the first extreme builds that we did on this channel way back more than a year ago and uh, still one of my favorite machines. Check out what's on the inside. The original processor was just a little fellow like this that fit on this ZIF socket, but Sonnet made this humongous monster of a one gigahertz G4 that kind of hangs all the way off of here. And to say that this thing turbocharges this Mac is an understatement. This is just an incredible upgrade and I still love this machine. Each one of these upgrades was a feat of engineering designing new ways to work modern tech around the limitations of aging architecture. And you could keep your favorite machine just chugging along with the latest and greatest. Well, for the most part. For years after they've been officially obsolete. And I've been collecting tons of these upgrades. It's probably my favorite thing. And I just love upgrading vintage Macs and seeing how far these upgrades can push them installing modern web browsers, later versions of Mac OS X, and even Linux. But there is one processor upgrade that I'd been looking for for ages. And it's actually pretty hard to find because they didn't make a whole lot of these and this thing upgraded some 
pretty weird Max, like the 5400, for example. And a goofy little machine called the 20th Anniversary Mac, whose collectors seem to really swipe these things up whenever they show up for sale. And it doesn't replace the processor at all, which on a lot of these machines was soldered directly to the motherboard. Sounds pretty familiar in this day and age. But instead, it uses the cache upgrade slot, which was only to upgrade the cache memory. But instead, this upgrade completely circumvents the soldered on processor using that slot, which is pretty freaking cool. So today we're gonna put this upgrade into an obscure machine that never sees any upgrade love because of this. That's right, my new favorite slab of a Macintosh clone, the UMAX Super Mac C500. Just like the sponsor of today's video is my new favorite sponsor, NordVPN. Online privacy is something that's really important to me. Back in the 90s when these accelerators were all the rage, the internet felt like a way safer place. Open, exciting, and not really all that scary. But the truth is, the web was still totally a dangerous place. Fortunately, today we have a lot of tools to help us stay safe and private on the internet. And NordVPN is a powerful modern tool for privacy. When you're browsing the web without a VPN, there's a ton of ways that people can weasel their way into your bits and bytes. NordVPN creates a safe tunnel that you can use, shielding you from prying eyes with next-gen AES-256 encryption, and their double VPN feature encrypts traffic twice. So visit nordvpn.com slash actionretro today for a special deal on NordVPN access, details in the description below. You'll be really helping to support the channel. Okay, so I have the Super Mac taken apart and uh, ready for the upgrade, but I wanna take some benchmarks of the stock system first. And uh, when I say stock system, well, mostly stock. You might notice there is a uh, CD-ROM from a Mac Pro here, and we're also booted off of a SATA SSD because I just couldn't help myself. I put a flashed PCI SATA controller card in here that we're using to boot all this stuff off of. If you want more info on how to make a flashed PCI SATA controller card, check out the Hrut K Mods video about it right here. It's pretty awesome and it's super fast. But anyway, I have my burned MacBench 4.0 CD in here that the built-in Super Mac CD-ROM did not want to read. So let's take some quick benchmarks. Okay, the baseline system is a Power Macintosh 6160, not too incredibly far off from our 140 megahertz machine, but we're just going to run processor tests. So let's make a new test suite. We'll do processor and floating point, and that'll be it. Okay, test complete, and uh, yeah, we blew that 6160 away. 187% processor score, 206% floating point score. Pretty good. So let's just go ahead and save this right to the desktop. Call this C500 stock. And then we might as well get an idea of what gaming is like on here on the stock system. With the only game that matters to me, Wolfenstein 3D. All right, so in a tiny window, Nice and fast, but let's make this a little bit bigger. All right, 640 by 480, uh, much more of a slideshow. And this game is notoriously poorly optimized for Mac. You know, I used to play this on a 386 and it was Playable, and here we are on a power PC 140 megahertz, and it's this slow. All right, let's install the drivers for the upgrade card. Okay, so here's the fun part. 
the easiest accelerator install ever. Uh, we don't need this thing anymore. So let's pull that out. And here's our flashed PCI SATA controller card and our SATA SSD, you know, it's pretty much stock. All right, so to get to the cache slot, just have to pop the front off and pull out the floppy drive. And there it is. Now, something really interesting that I found out after doing a little bit of research, it turns out that there were a couple upgrades made to go into the processor slot itself, which is this ZIF socket. So that's extremely interesting actually, because that means that this C500 and its big brother, the C600, might just be the only two Macs ever made that can take two different avenues to G3 upgrades. So we can pop in our cache upgrade here, but there's also probably an extremely hard to find G3 upgrade by newer tech and then one by a company called Phase 5 out of Germany that were sold around the year 2000 and uh, that's interesting also because that I think is gonna be the only way to make this machine natively boot Mac OS X. Mac OS X will not work with this cache upgrade. There, there was never any driver made for it, unfortunately, at least as far as I can find. So in order to get the G3 performance out of the cache upgrade, we're gonna have to stick to Mac OS 9. But if anyone has a lead on the C500, C600 G3 upgrades, hit me up. All right, back together and newly G3-ified. Let's uh, start this thing up. All right, that's what we like to see. Crescendo G3, that fancy chin, my favorite chin in all of computing. And of course I forgot to plug in the optical drive, so uh, I'll have to restart so we can run the benchmarks. All right, let's run some Mac Bench benchmarks. We'll do just our processor. Okay, so, well, just uh, a little bit over a Power Macintosh 6160. Let's pull in our stock scores. Good Lord, <laughs> it, is, it is off the chart. So our stock C500 scored a 187 processor score and our G3 400 scored a 1013. Similar with floating point C500 stock 206 and our G3 400 scored 976. Okay. That's, uh, that's pretty good. If we go into Apple System Profiler, yeah, there it is, our 400 megahertz PowerPC G3. Pretty nice. All right, let's check out Wolfenstein 3D. All right, well, as you might expect, it is a night and day difference. We are running still at 640 by 480 maximum resolution. Doesn't make me any better at the game, but boy, is it smooth. <laughs> Although this keyboard still only lets me hit two keys at the same time. <laughs> it's not, not ideal for gaming. Okay, so that'll do it for this look at a super weird and super interesting 
G3 Accelerator for Upgrade Challenged Max. And uh, this super cool Super Max C300 Macintosh clone, well, it's technically not an Upgrade Challenged Mac. It's kind of the opposite because there's two possible paths to put a G3 or actually a G4 processor in there. Doing a little bit of research, I found that you can get up to a G4 400 megahertz made specifically for this machine and its tower counterpart. I mean, I'm not gonna bet money that I'll ever find one of those, but I'm certainly gonna look for it because it would be really cool to put Mac OS X on this thing. And technically you can still put Mac OS X on here without a G3 processor with the original 140 megahertz PowerPC processor, but <laughs> I mean, that's not gonna be useful for anything other than the cool factor, which is actually a pretty big incentive in my book because hey, you know me, I put Mac OS X on everything. But while this is a super cool Wolfenstein 3D machine now that plays flawlessly, I do actually have something else planned for this cash card upgrade. That 5400C that I wrestled onto this desk earlier isn't the only upgrade challenged Mac that I have. If you've been around the channel for a while, you might have seen a couple hints about another extremely special machine that I picked up recently, which is also upgrade challenged. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel because we're gonna do a pretty incredible build with that machine. But if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more Macintosh shenanigans like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to B Perkins, Camilla Noseda, Chris Allegretta, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Daniel Hubbard, Greg Ruckke from Ruckke Mods, John Malman, Nick Hamsey, and Scott Thompson, who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these shenanigans possible.